so, always been struggling between the three terminologies: a counselor, a psychiatrist, and a psychologist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so psychologist and the counselor are doing the same. They do talk therapy. So they try to fix a mental health problem or psychiatric problem through talking, using uh, specific techniques like uh, cognitive behavior therapy or dialectical behavior therapy, but basically it's talking. But a, a psychi psychiatrist or addiction physician or uh, addiction doctor or a family doctor who specializes in mental health, all these doctors who are MD, they mainly treat patients with prescribing medication. Some of them choose, like me, I, I got the training for counseling, like talk therapy, so I can do both. I can prescribe and I can do talk therapy too. Uh, <coughs> some physician knows they prefer just to, to do the prescription, but they refer patient to do talk therapy with another uh, like counselor or psychologist. Counselor and psychologist, the difference is the education. So um, like uh, to be a psychologist, uh, you get paid more and uh, you need more like training. A counselor is less training, but you get paid less. But basically they do almost the same, okay? Um, what we, so I run, and here in Calgary, I run a program uh, for mental health and addiction. Um, it's called the SOUL program. Uh, part of our program is to help patients with relationship problem. Uh, because we know when there is a psychiatric problem or a mental health problem, there is usually a relationship problem, okay? Uh, it could be the cause of the mental health problem, and because sometimes the mental health is causing the relationship problem. Um, so today I'm just going to talk about the principles for a healthy relationship. Um, whatever you are uh, single or in a relationship or um, uh, couples or where you, whatever, where you are within, you know, life, you're still a student, you are working, you're try, you are um, married or you are single, is that this session will be helpful for you. Um, the main thing is that we want to focus on is this acronym, relationship. I'm the one who developed this acronym, so it's a copyright here, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so these are the foundation for a healthy relationship. You know, the divorce rate now is almost like 50% in some countries, okay? Um, and if you uh, wanna maintain a relationship, you will need to be working on all these principles, okay? So. What I want you to get is to memorize, understand, and memorize, and try to imagine how you're going to put these principles into relationship. These principles, you can use them not just in a romantic relationship, but also some of them, techniques you can use in a work uh, environment, you can use them at the church, you can use within the services, okay? Uh, like, if you want to stop me at any time and you ask a question, feel free to ask a question. Uh, but focus, with, I'm going to ask what... Each letter stand for, so you need to memorize all of them. I will quickly, so every, every, every letter of this, <laughs> yeah, every letter of this is a, a counseling session. Like when I do, sometimes I do couple counseling. So each letter of this is a session for counseling. So, and there can be a presentation, but I'm not gonna go in details of all of them. I just wanna again cover the main framework for maintaining a relationship or creating a healthy relationship or couple counsel, okay? So R, R stands for renew love and rituals. You know, the, the, we know at the beginning of any relationship, there is excitement, there is euphoria, there is romance, but after six months or a year or two years, usually these positive feelings fade away, right? Okay, so to maintain a relationship, you will need to be able to renew love, romance, excitement that was happening at the beginning. Okay, you got it? Uh, the problem with the stress and the work and the kids, sometimes you will not have enough time to reflect on this part, but sometimes you see the relationship is falling apart because of lacking in this area. To be honest, uh, lacking in any of this area can cause, can cause divorce and separation. So, when even uh, maybe some more, most of you, you are not in a relationship yet, 
okay? But if you have a friend who is in a relationship and it is a long committed relationship and you wanna maintain the relationship, I would advise you share with them this acronym, okay? Because you know, when you teach something, you will be good at it, okay? Um, rituals, rituals mean like certain behavior or certain things you need to be doing weekly or daily. Uh, it creates security and it creates connection and anticipation within the relationship. So maybe um, a night talk every day at the end of the day, you talk with your partner, five minutes, 10 minutes to debrief about the day. This could be a positive ritual, okay? Uh, kissing in the morning, uh, saying good morning, uh, give your partner a hug. These rituals uh, can maintain the relationship and create connection and also security within the relationship. Every family have different dynamics for the ritual, but there has to be ritual. I have some patients, they don't have any rituals within the relationship, so we try to create some rituals that are gonna make, make both of them feel safe. Okay, so R stand for what? Renew love and excitement and rituals. rituals. You know, maybe every Friday you go on a date with your partner. Or every Sunday we go to the church. Or, so you create certain rituals. Within these rituals, the, the relationship will flourish more. Um, e stands for express. So you need to express positive feeling all the time within the relationship. What do you mean by positive feeling? Like positive energy, like what do you mean positive energy? Like uh, kindness, gratitude, compassion, like these positive feeling has to be expressed within the relationship, especially the gratitude. Um, you know, lots of studies showing that gratitude improves mental health. You know, when you wake up in the morning and you reflect on three things positive in your life, okay? This is gonna give you positive energy for the whole day. Um, so you need to reflect all the time on the positive personality traits with your partner. Okay? So gratitude, yes. Uh, am I allowed to ask questions? Yeah, 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 go ahead. Okay, just talking about the expression of gratitude, empathy, compassion, whatever sort of emotion we have to express. Yeah. Do we agree that we as personnel, that one, it's not one size that fits them, we express our feelings in different ways? Exactly. Yes. Cutting to the chase. What if the languages are not interpreted the same? Like, me and my partner, I do express my love and empathy and gratitude in physical touch. But she does not like physical touch. And vice versa. She likes to talk about it. But I don't like to listen. Do we compromise? Do we just get separated? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this jumps to, you know... Uh, you see, T, T stands for temperament and the personality, okay. right? This is oh, something, okay. no, th okay. this is something, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, let, let's cover <laughs> this part, okay. okay. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> you, you, you mentioned something very important, and you know there is a book, uh, it's called The Five Languages of Love. Yeah, I would suggest all, all of us read this book. This is actually part of the program, like all my patients need to learn about the five languages of love. Okay, so some people will be the physical touch, some people will uh, receive and the giving gift, and uh, so everyone is different in the way they express love and the positive feeling. Okay, you, 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 you will need to accept and understand and recognize and appreciate the personality differences. Again, recognize, understand, and the most important part, appreciate the differences. Some people will uh, challenge each other and say, no, we are one in Christ, okay? We are not two different persons anymore. We are one in Christ. This is misconception and misunderstanding about the Christian teaching. We are one, yes, in Christ, in the spiritual values, in the spiritual teaching, but we're still two separate individuals uh, um, with two separate personality and so it's, uh, two different uh, the likes and the dislikes. Um, when I jump to... This one, what is it? Yeah, this show, so there is husband and wife, right? There is common interest, 
common goals in the middle, right? Certain things they share, but still they have, maybe they have different goals, still, yes, there is shared goals and values, but also there is different goals, different interest, okay? Yeah, the, what, what's that? Yeah, yeah, and with individual differences, but the two separate individuals. The problem, some uh, Christians, they try, no, 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 we are one now. So we try to combine both, okay, and they make a copy, identical copy of each other. This is a, can cause separation. Why? Because this is going to be very boring. This is going to be cause, you know, possessiveness, control, codependency. I don't know if you hear about the word codependency. You know, so after trial to be one for a year or two, it's going to end up with separation. So we don't want to be completely independent, and the way we don't want to be completely dependent on each other. We want to be interdependent, which is the first, you know, uh, part of the slide, which is uh, you uh, respect, first recognize, um, understand the differences, and they appreciate the differences, okay? Because uh, the difference creates attraction. Similarity creates maintenance for relationship. I, I, I get this question all the time. People ask me, should I get married to someone or start dating someone is very similar to me or very different? What do you think? Should we start dating people who are very similar to us or very different? What do you think? Yeah, this is what I want. Yeah, 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 too, too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, want, I need some similarity. But if you ask me what similarity is more or difference is more, I would say similarity is more. Okay, okay. but there has to be differences because this is going to create fun, you know, romance, attraction. Yeah, opposites attract, exactly. So we want to, but don't try, you know, yes, we, we post trying to work on our spiritual values like kindness, love non-attachment, acceptance, compassion. To, we try to be one on this aspect. But start, we, 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 we have different stomachs, we have different face, we have different heart, you know. So the body is different, also the ego is different, the personality is different, okay? But it needs more time and more reflection, and more understanding to... You mentioned just the language of love. This is a discussion. Each partner needs to work on it to identify what I like and what dislike, what do you like and what do you dislike, and the, where is the compromise and the understanding gonna happen, okay? Um, I'm gonna go, sorry. How we, Okay, we're going to go back to the same acronym. R stands for Renew Love and Rituals. Uh, e express positive feeling, especially try to reflect on things that are positive in your partner. Okay, because we have, ten all of us, we have tendency to focus on the negative. Okay, actually it is a cognitive distortion, like intellectual problem when you discount the positive in your life. Some people have this tendency to the extreme. I don't see any positive, I discount the positive, I see only the negative, because this is the something that I wanna fix, okay? But the problem, if you continue focusing just on the negative and the failure and the negative personality traits, you will not be able to maintain a relationship and enjoy life in general. What's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, L stand for loss and the challenges. You know, within life, there is ups <coughs> and downs, right? There will be loss. There will be challenges. You, you, you might lose your job, your money, God forbid, loved ones, okay? And that sometimes if it is a major loss, it can shake the foundation of a relationship. So you will need both to agree on how we're gonna cope with loss and challenges, okay, all the time. So this is an area you have to discuss with your partner. What if we lose our job, what are we gonna do? What if we lose uh, lots of our money, what are we gonna do? What we have to move to migrate from one country to another, what are we gonna do? 
and at least be open to offer emotional support and validation. You know, so this is a skill that you all of us need to learn. When someone is struggling with a cha some challenging problems, we need to learn how we're gonna offer emotional, like reflective listening. I don't know if you are familiar with this word, reflective listening, what does that mean? Reflective listening. Yes, so someone is talking and then you listen, you hear them and then you reflect back. Maybe you paraphrase or rephrase what he said and they, this, this way you show them that you uh, validating them and you understand what they are going through. So at least you offer the emotional support when there is a time of a challenge or loss or, and you offer validation. Okay, A, a stand for apologies and uh, uh, forgiveness you know with, at some point in the relationship you will hurt and you will be hurt you will hurt someone that your partner and they, they're gonna hurt you whatever it is intentionally or unintentionally it's gonna happen and why it's gonna happen because we are two different people with different likes and the dislikes okay with different family of origin with different dynamics with different different uh, genetic setup with different lots of uh, differences okay so you will hurt each other intentionally or unintentionally sometime so one of the main principles for maintaining relationship is to be able to say i am sorry okay not just verbally saying i am sorry but also making amends you know what that mean making amends like try to fix the past errors or the current mistake that you are doing. It's not just saying sorry, but working on making amends. Um, you know, in, in addiction treatment, I don't know if you are familiar with the 12 step program. There is a 12 steps to uh, recover from addiction. One of them, one of the steps is to make amends. Make a list of all people you have hurt on your life. Whole list, okay? And you and your therapist or your counselor, you try to make amends for everyone. If you stole money, bring it back. Okay, if you uh, if emotionally abused your kids, you pay for their counseling. So this is part of addiction treatment. So you see in a relationship, we need to use this skill, which is at least you'll be able to say sorry. And if you do something wrong, you try to make amends. At the same time, you'll be able to forgive, you know, there's two types of forgiveness. A decisional forgiveness. For the sake of Christ, I forgive you. Okay? This is part of forgiveness. So this is a decision. But also there is an emotional forgiveness, which is more important than the decisional part, which means that letting go of resentment. You don't hold grudges. You don't hold the resentment. Okay? So as much as you can, after you forgive, you let go of resentment. But uh, sometimes it's very difficult when there is, uh, you know, abuse, uh, physical abuse or domestic violence or there is uh, uh, infidelity or stuff like that. But still there are some counseling techniques that help a patient forgive. I don't know if you, you can share, uh, Google forgiveness letter. If, if you hold the resentment toward your supervisor, your parent, your partner, you can use the forgiveness letter and then you can Google it and there is a letter you're going to write to be able to forgive others. Well, okay. What was the first type of forgiveness you mentioned? Decisional, like a de just an intellectual decision. Okay. But we want to focus more on the emotional one. Because holding resentment, what do you think? Holding resentment uh, cause what? Well, what is the... Uh, yeah, it's bad. It's, forget about the relationship. It's bad for you. What, what, what do you think it can cause? Holding resentment. Yeah, it can cause anger problem. Yeah. You become very bitter. Yeah, very bitter. What else? Resentment. Yeah, resentment. Are you talking about trauma? No, the resentment. If you hold the resentment inside, keep it. What do you think, how it can affect your life? How would it affect your life or your relationship? Both. That, uh, this is what I want you to see, that relationship is part of your life, you know. I see some people, you know, struggle physically with high blood sugar, uh, diabetes, immunity disease, because of a relationship problem. Because mental health, I don't know if you know, if you have 
mental health problems, it's going to affect your cortisol level, also adrenaline level. Uh, it's going to increase cytokines. Like if you hear someone from medical field, the cytokines and inflammatory marker, like increase the inflammation in your body. And the increased inflammation, increased cortisol level, increased adrenaline, these cause diabetes, high blood pressure, immunity problems, uh, chronic pain. So holding resentment, having relationship problem, stress, chronic stress, going to cause major, you know, medical and psychological problems. So we want to let go of resentment. Sometimes we use also meditation, you know, meditation, you know, and breathing exercise, you know, this stuff, <laughs> you know, so, so sometimes I ask them, close your eyes, okay, feel the resentment, and then, then imagine that there is a train in front of you, and you are taking all that resentment, and you put it in the train. So again, we ask them, sit, relax, breathe in, breathe out, then imagine there is a train in front of you. And they take all the resentment from your heart and you put it in the train. And the train is moving away. And then the, another cart, you put the resentment and the train is moving away. Sometimes we talk about clouds. You put all resentment on clouds. So all these visualizations are exercises to let go of resentment. You can use it at home. You know, let's say you have resentment because, uh, as I mentioned, your supervisor or your boss or your... Uh, um, uh, parent or any resentment you have, you can use uh, meditation, visualization to let go. To summarize, we need to learn how to apologize and how to forgive. This is a major part of uh, relationship. Temperament, we talked about this. We have different, you know, likes and dislikes, uh, personalities. Okay, how are we going to it's not, a, I, I remember a quote was saying, you know, uh, to make a relationship work, it doesn't depend on how much compatibility there is in the relationship. It depends on how you're going to deal with the incompatibilities. So how you're going to deal with the differences is more important than trying to find someone who's very similar to you. Uh, intimacy. So intimacy is an important part of emotional. So what, what, what is the definition of marriage? According to me, what is the definition of marriage or a committed relationship? It is friendship plus intimacy. Again, what is the definition of marriage? Friendship. So you need to be friend with your partner, okay? Plus a little bit of intimacy. Emotional and sexual. You need to be aware that uh, sexual experience, sexual expectation are different from one person to another. The same languages of love are different from one person to another. Also, what you like, what you dislike about sexual dif dif uh, intimacy is different from one person to another. Also, different from one stage to another. Okay, like when you are 20, is different when you are 40, is different when you are 50. And uh, all these areas are important to maintain a relationship. Okay, and uh, we try, like in couple counseling, we set first a session or first two sessions, we try to identify which areas that we need to work on. Is it the intimacy part? Is it the communication part? Is it personality problems? Is it a, a, a euphoria and love and romance? Like we try to identify where is the problem. Um, o stands for openness and the communication. You know, if you ask me what is the most important part out of this acronym, is the communication part. Because to, to work on sexual intimacy, you need communication. To see the differences in personality, you need a positive communication. To work on challenges and grief and loss, you need communication. So communication is one of the main parts about um, this acronym. But I find that a lot of people, uh, communication is very hard for them, especially about sensitive topics like that. So like, I feel like you need to be open to be able to communicate. Yes. Uh, Exactly. And the, we're going to talk about you because you mentioned, I'm just going to mention now what are the blocks of communication. Like why, why is sometimes there is barriers for communication. What do you want to say? Yeah, so technically, he was talking about that a relationship or a marriage is technically friendship plus the intimacy. Yeah. But me and my friend, we're going to talk about everything, but still keep aside of myself to myself. Exactly. Yeah. Jumping back to the word of openness. 
how much should I be open with this friend for the provincial arts method? When or how or what should I tell and should I not approach the stage? Do I just spill everything? Do I just keep stuff to myself? And then we keep just hanging around this catch-22 game. I should have been telling that now, but I couldn't because I didn't have enough trust. So you get my point, it's a bit of a struggling game. Just, what's the optimum solution for that? There's no one-size-fits-all for, on, you, you know, so, it, yeah, yeah, I, I know the, the people don't like <laughs> this way of presenting a challenging question, but that's why we need, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is a challenging question like this one, okay. Uh, we need each other. No man is an island. You know the island? separated from each one. No man is an island. You need other people around you to help you grow and uh, uh, go through relationship problems and the uh, conflict and stuff. So you need a buna, a counselor, a doctor, a close friend, someone with experience in relationship, a parent. You need someone to talk to, to see what are, what you should say now, what you should wait a little bit, because every situation is different, okay? So again, the problem with uh, Egyptian culture, they keep everything as a secret, they don't talk. Even within the marriage, when there is a start of problems within a marriage, they don't talk about it until it is too late. So, you know, I see, you know, I see mainly I see white people, uh, but maybe 5% I see uh, Egyptian people. Usually if they come for a marriage problem, it's too late. Like I would say more, like 99% it's too late to be able to work on anything. Uh, and I have a, within the Egyptian culture, I have a red flag. Uh, when an when Egyptian man tell me, you know, I'm okay if she's going to get married. I'm okay. I can, you know, I, or the wife tell me, if he starts dating tomorrow, I'm totally okay with it. You know, <laughs> so when okay. they completely let go like that, <laughs> you know, in, in, in our conservative culture, the jealousy is very strong. Okay. When you see people letting go like that, you know, you know, it's too late. However, we, we, we always see hope, you know, in anything, and we try to work, but don't wait until it is too late. Then you start to addressing stuff like that, okay? It's each, and that, like, because the Canadian culture is more open, they come, like, when it is, you know, start, like, there's some argument, uh, unresolved conflict, they include others, people who trust. Uh, I was attending a Filipino, like, a wedding, they have this, uh, like in a church, I don't know if you know this culture, they have the sponsorship program, like uh, when you're getting married, you need to have a family which sponsor you. Like not a sponsor for immigration, no, sponsor you within the marriage. Like when you have problem, you go talk to them. And they're usually older than you, they have been married maybe 10 years, 20 years, but because they know in their culture that I can't do that, and I can't maintain a relationship without advice from others. And do they pay you? I know. <laughs> Uh, what's that? We have the same thing in my culture. Oh, your culture too? Unfortunately, like most of the time, she might, might not be as helpful as you. Really? Yeah, so <laughs> each side has like, your, we call like the elders of the family. And uh -huh. when there's a problem, like, even before going to Abuna, you like invite them and they come and they discuss what's the issue. And uh -huh. they have to, like the same, it's decided like right around the marriage time, who's going to be like for each family. And so if, if like there's so much conflict and they cannot talk to each other, they're like, okay, we'll just have these people over and oh, okay, I see. discuss for open amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, as much as you can, you have someone to talk to that you trust. You can't, uh, e even like one friend. Like people tell me, oh, I have 20 friends. I have 20,000 followers on Facebook. Yeah, you don't need all of these people. You need just one person. You can talk to them as if you are talking to yourself. Every one of us need one person. You can talk to them as if you are talking to yourself. If it means you're going to spend the 10 years of your life trying to find this person. Okay, maybe it will be a buna, maybe it is a doctor, maybe uh, your parent, I don't know, your, your grandma, but, but try to find a person. When you talk to them as if you're talking to yourself. This is very helpful psychologically. Um, yeah, the blocks of communication. 
do that part. Sorry, what R stand for? Renew love. E, e is what? Ex yes, no. express gratitude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. L? Loss and challenges. How are we going to cope with loss and challenges? Uh, e? Yeah, yeah. Uh, did we go to T or not yet? Temper yeah, temperament and the personality. There is differences in temperament and differences. You need to, appre again, appreciate the differences. So usually in uh, our culture, the man is a goal-directed personality. We want to fix, we want to get things done. A woman is uh, relationship-oriented, okay? She want to focus more on a relationship. I know some people for you look at me, uh, sexist, uh, is, uh, like, uh, you know, racist. This guy is, uh, no. no, no, this is psychologically proven. You know, there is psychological differences between femininity and masculinity, okay? However, who are going to carry, this is a debate, who can carry the, <laughs> these traits, but there is femininity, <laughs> there is masculinity. Usually the male carries a masculinity, usually the masculinity, the testosterone come as goal-oriented behavior. I'm going to get it done now. I don't care about what these people are going to say. Okay, yes, logical, more logical. Women tend to be, no, relationship. We're going to get things done, but I, uh, I want to make everyone happy. And I, this, I think this is biologically set up in women because they're gonna, they are the primary caregiver for kids. Um, so tell me no, but husband should stay at home, help kids too. You know, and this argument continue. But uh, no, no, who, who gonna deliver? Who gonna breastfeed? Is a mother, biologically, this is how it works, okay? So she spend more time biologically with kids that's why she need some lot more um, uh, uh, psychological differences and the be relationship and the express feeling more than uh, men but anyway so t temperament and uh, uh, did we finish i or not yet intimacy. what's that intimacy emotional and sexual uh, oh what is oh Exactly. Okay. Um, these are because you talked about, what's your name again? George. George. Because George say, yeah, communication is the main part. You know, there are some blocks or barriers for communication. Sometimes people are aggressive in their communication. Some people are passive. You know, passive mean like they shut down, they surrender. When there is a conflict, they don't talk. Okay. We don't want that because you're going to burn out and uh, this is going to cause accumulation of resentment and anger and you're going to blow up at certain point. Also, we don't want to be aggressive. Certain people, some people will be aggressive. Aggressive like what? They use aggressive behaviors, like discounting. They talk about your negativity, like the negative side of your life or what, with negative behavior. They don't see anything positive. So this is how they communicate. You know, they, when they want to get something done, they mention what is negative, what is, uh, what is need to be fixed, what is wrong with you. This is how they talk. Okay. You, you want to ask? No? Uh, another, uh, some people will use withdrawing or abandoning. You know, when, uh, when they see conflict, they withdraw. And this is uh, like a, a punishment. And some people will call it a silent punishment. You know, so uh, we don't want to use that too. Threatening. Um, you know, you, you, uh, uh, are you going to help me or I'm going to leave or I'm going to ask someone else? So using threatening in, uh, in the communication also this cause problems. Blaming. Yeah, so uh, you, as a couple, you don't have enough money. Oh, because you're spending all our money. But maybe both of you are spending lots of money. Yeah, but no. So some people have this tendency to blame others. You have kids and they are failing at math, for example. They're not doing well in math or science. Oh, because you are a bad mother. So you blame them, you know, for every negative experience we're going to go through. Uh, belittling, I think you know what that means. Uh, guilt tripping. If they want to think it's good done, they put, make you feel guilty. So you do it out of guilt. Yeah, that's fine, but I'm going to do it then. 
No, but when you do, when you live your life and you do most of what you do based on guilt, this is going to cause an anxiety, depression, addiction, and you're going to see me. Okay? So we want to, as much as you can within this life, let go of negative feelings like guilt, anger, and don't let someone make you feel angry, guilty, anxious, fearful. These negative feelings are not good here and for body in general. Derailing, like changing topics. Some people, when they communicate and when there is a conflict, they change the topic. And that's why if you can use this temporary, you know, when there is a, in the heat of the moment and uh, you are almost going to punch them in the face, you switch topic, yeah, that's fine. But if it becomes a pattern, this is how you communicate. Each time we talk about something, you change the topic. This is aggressive communication. Last thing is uh, taking... Well, uh, yeah, yeah. So, like, do you ever see the, the combination of one person in the relationship is very passive and the other person is aggressive? And then, like, how do you deal with that? Because they're, like, opposite. Yeah. In our culture, usually, the man is the aggressive communicator. The woman <laughs> is the passive. And sometimes, you know, the woman is the aggressive and the man is the passive. Okay? Uh, both create problems. I know sometimes, is a, you know, they compliment. Like we, sometimes it, uh, they compromise through things go and uh, life continue. Okay, but within limits, I, I, and I agree with this technique, that's fine. Sometimes we let go and we forgive and he, this is his temperament. His dad is like that and his mom is like that. He got this, you know, I think genetically he's predisposed to be like that. So I'm going to accept him as it is. So uh, acceptance also is, should be part of relationship. There has to be some things we need to accept. Even if it is negative, it is negative, but, but within limits. He is aggressive in communication. 90% of the time, or 80%, or 10%, or 5%. Maybe 5% of the time he's like that. But 90% he's good. Okay, we're going to accept it. Because if, if I focus and maximize and magnify the 5%, it's going to cause more problems. Okay? So, again, if we go to the extreme, at some point, sometimes we make people, be, some point, sometimes we make people feel guilty. And sometimes we blame others. And, and sometimes we blame our parent. Oh, why did we, I hate Canada. They are the ones who bring me to Canada. So we blame them for, you know, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I was neglected as a child, but you look like he was like a, his mom was late one day, like when he was in a daycare, but he was neglected as a child. So sometimes we do this as a defense mechanism, but I, I can allow it. I wouldn't say this is aggressive. I would allow it to a certain point. Yeah, go ahead. That's, that's my question. So you mentioning these six points and whatever comes after that as communication blockers gives me the feeling that they are fixable, that they can be treated with. And you said that we are open to accept this to some extent in, in the partner. But my question now is, when these six points should be considered as red flags, but that's the time I should snap my tail and run. You are talking about during marriage or during yeah. uh, engagement or during, you want to run away when? When, when do you want to run? <laughs> Yeah, to, to be honest, if there is a marriage and the kids, I would work hard to maintain this marriage okay. as much as I can. No matter what is happening, my goal is to maintain because I, I know uh, complications and the negative impact of divorce on kids. We see this in our clinics every day. This is something we try to avoid, especially. So if someone is, there is lack of communication at the beginning, okay. Good luck. We can't. I think it uh, doesn't work. Uh, we, we, we have been trying six months. It doesn't work. That's fine. Someone who is married and having kids. No, it is not easy. I know it's a culture here. They want to replace everything very quick. Uh, the TV is broken. Replace it. And uh, in Egypt, the TV is broken. Try to fix it. It's broken again. Fix it again. So you have the same TV for 30 years. You, <laughs> you know, this attitude... You know, you're, because I live in, I don't know about you, you live here or, uh, or you live, in, I, I live in both culture and I do counts, I did counseling in post culture. It's not easy to replace 
people in our culture, if something is broken, we work on it. We try to work more. We try to work more. But here, the quick fix. And if it's not a quick fix, I'm not. But it's the same thing with people in, in our culture. They don't work on themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is another yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. They accept, I think, more than we should be accepting. And uh, that's why. What, what is that? <laughs> okay. So, uh, I don't know if you know the serenity. The, do you know, you guys, the serenity prayer? Serenity prayer. You know the serenity prayer? What is the serenity? Uh, it's like, God, give me uh, courage and wisdom. It's something like that. Yes. Yeah. The, we, we, I would love for all of us to use this serenity prayer in a relationship, in our relationships. What, what's the serenity prayer? And we use it in addiction too, in addiction treatment. Um, God give us the courage to change things that we can change. God. God give us the courage to change things we can change. And they give us the serenity and the peace to accept things that we cannot change. So in life, there are things we can change. And there are things we cannot change. And the only option we have is to accept. And then give us wisdom to know the difference. You know, what are the things that I should change in my partner? But what are the things that I should accept? And to what limit I should accept? Okay, this needs lots of wisdom. If you don't have this wisdom, again, no man is an island. We need each other. And sometimes the talk, you tell me, oh, I talk to Abuna or I talk to a counselor and nothing happened. Sometimes just the talking is like a mirror. You know, if you have a pimple here, I don't know what it is. Is this is cancer or, a, or acne or what? I need a mirror to look at it, right? So to, to know, okay, this is a going to be fixed with a cream or I see a surgeon or something like a, the same thing when you talk to someone this is a mirror just the talking you'll be you see yourself and see other when you talk you think when you see a counselor they're going to give you solution for all the problem no most of the training for to be a counselor is how you're going to listen and reflect and the paraphrase and the direct just as a patient to find the solution for himself so talking fix 50% of problems, okay? And the solution for a problem from, will come from inside. Anyway, I don't wanna... Stop working. So... Uh, and instead for a new life and the family of origin, you know, each family has a different dynamics, right? Your parents have certain rituals for everything, certain ideas and beliefs. And your partner also have a family. They have dynamics, especially in a multicultural society like Canada. You know, everyone had coming from different, sometimes even different religion, different ideas. So how are you going to bring this to the table? So this needs to be discussed, okay? So basically, postpartum need to talk. Okay, can you tell me about your family? What you guys do? How you communicate? How you celebrate different things? Okay, and what do you like about them that you want to bring it to our relationship? And the same thing on the other side. What do you like about it? And what you want to bring to the relationship? Spirituality. This is an important part of any relationship. Doctor, do you teach this in the clinic? Yeah. This is part of the treatment program, the spirituality. You need to connect with your spirituality. Why is this because the church asks us to do so? No, it's because the studies have shown that people who connect with the spirituality, they have more love, more joy, more kindness. It is a medium where you practice social life like this. We are here because of spirituality, right? We get to know each other. So spirituality is not negative and religion is not negative impact on our life and the physical uh, body. It, it has a positive, the, I, I don't know if you know, I recently published a book about the impact of spirituality on mental health because uh, w we see people from different religions. So, and the study have shown that the spirituality 
is important for mental health, but patient will ask me, yeah, what kind of spirituality? Like, what should I do then? Like, should I go to church or go to a mosque or go to a temple or meditate or yoga? Like, what, what is spirituality? So I wrote a book, if you want to find it on Amazon, talk about seven principles for spirituality that all of us need to practice to be able to say, I am spiritually connected. Okay, so spirituality is important. It brings positive energy, and we can use this positive energy to maintain a relationship. And it is easy if you have a religion, it's easy. This is a medium where you practice your spirituality. Handling conflict. Conflict is an unavoidable part of any relationship. Again, it is unavoidable part of any relationship. There will be conflict all the time. It is not a red flag, this is part of life. So handling conflict uh, and trying to find alternatives all the time. This is important too. Uh, I, ideas and the core beliefs. You know, some people have uh, negative ideas and the core beliefs about relationship. Like I give you example. Most men are aggressive, for example. Most women are unfaithful. Whatever they say that verbally or subconsciously because of a past trauma or a negative experience, so they have this irrational ideas. And if you come in a relationship with this irrational idea, what's that? Mentality. Yeah, if you come up with uh, this mentality, Whatever consciously or subconsciously, you're going to project it into the relationship and it's going to cause you a problem. So you need to let go or at least replace the irrational with more rational. Okay? And this happens with interaction. So, but be mindful about, you know, some people come with the relation to the relationship with irrational beliefs about the relationship. And some people have this uh, cognitive, like black and white. Do you know black and white thinking? What, what black and white thinking? Yeah. My husband, yeah, my husband is the best husband in the world. And then he do one thing wrong. He's the worst husband in the world. You see, this is black and white thinking. This caused problem. Oh, Dr. Atala is the best doctor in the city. Then I am late one day because I'm behind. He's the worst doctor in the city. I tell them, man, look, this is black and white thinking, okay? This is going to cause you problems. It's not just about me. It's going to cause you lots of problems in life. Same thing in relationship. Uh, also, another one is uh, like irrational way of thinking is uh, mind reading. Have you heard about mind reading? What that people assume I know what you think about? There are people who live their life with this idea. You know, I know, I know what they think about me. Yeah, I know, I know what is running inside. Yeah, yeah, I know. So if you assume what your partner is thinking about all the time, this is going to cause problems, right? Discounting the positive. Some personality have this tendency. They don't see positive at all. It is a survival, you know, it is a sur there are survival benefits. Like 3,000 years ago, yeah, we need to catastrophize and expect the worst because an attack from a snake or a lion will end the life. So we have this some, sometimes biologically ingrained in some people, but you need to see negative and also positive. Um, yeah, catastrophization. Have you heard about catastrophization? Do you know catastrophe? Tafkir karesi. You know, you expect the worst gonna happen, so you, you you think about the worst case scenario. Okay, and you live in it. Yeah. yeah so my husband. No yeah. yeah, the worst. So my husband will cheat on me, and then uh, I will be my by myself with these kids, then we will go to women's shelter. And then my <laughs> in women's shelter, my kids will learn addictions. And my kids will be addicts. And I will be addicts. Then I will be homeless. Then I, <laughs> I'll be on the streets. And then, I, you know, I, anyway, she spent the whole night ruminating about the idea. Then they wake up, her husband giving her a hug. No, don't hug me. You know, so, so you see a reaction. What's wrong? Uh, yeah, fi khna'a, but the khna'a is not outside, it's, it's inside. So, uh, assume or expect the worst case scenario 
and you live it in your mind, it's gonna cause, some people live it in their mind, but they don't express, they don't verbalize, but it causes negative energy. Like people around you gonna feel something wrong. You know, this is, there is, you know, there is feelings, yeah, physically we, we can see it when people talk about it, but also there is energy that we can't verbalize, but we feel it. If someone is anxious, you, you're gonna feel it. Even if it, they, don't, uh, 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 they don't have facial expression of anxiety, but you feel it. So sometimes the energy can be felt even if it is not expressed. Anyway, last part is parenting. You know, we need to talk, if, you start, if you're planning to have kids, you need to talk how we're gonna parent these, these, these kids. And uh, I don't know, there is four types of parenting. I don't know if you know about them, the authoritative, authoritarian, neglectful. Um, anyway, usually the Egyptian culture like to be authoritarian, which is, yeah, uh, so they focus on routine and structure, no love and affection, you know, but we, we like to balance both. Uh, love and affection, also routine and structure. So goals and achievement and the grades is good but also communication and relationship also is important and we need to balance. Anyway, guys, I just wanna go to this slide to make sure you memorize and you understand the whole point. So tell me what R stand for. Yeah, what does that mean? Keep it fresh. Keep it fresh, yeah, renew, uh, yeah. <laughs> Two soothing drinks, something like good. <laughs> uh, keep it fresh. You know what? I'm gonna change the acronym to <laughs> include keep it fresh. <laughs> so our renew love and the ritual. What rituals mean? Stuff you do regular. Yeah, you do it on a regular basis that uh, maintain the relationship and they create more connection. Okay. E. Yeah, express positive, like especially gratitude, compassion, verbalize this stuff. Oh, I like how you cook. Oh, I like how you dress. Oh, I like. So you verbalize what you really like. Men, men tend to be like more, uh, the love language is more like a, not expression. It's more like a cooking, a gift, stuff like that, physical stuff. Uh, action gratitude. Yes. Um, um, so e, we express the positive feelings. There has to be positive. You bring, uh, and if there is no positive, try to keep it fresh, right? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, tough the leg. <laughs> uh, so L, what L stands for? Well, what, what should I do then? Like what? What loss and challenge? Yes, so there will be losses and challenges in life, how we're gonna work through it. And anticipate that this can shake the foundation of any relationship. So let's say, God forbid, you have a diagnosis of cancer. I see sometimes, like one partner, get diagnosed with cancer. I see some people fall apart because of the diagnosis, and some people will be more connected and uh, create more love and uh, empathy and the compassion and uh, the, the, the relationship becomes stronger after this diagnosis. So we need to be able to see when there is loss and the challenges, we need to you know, work more on addressing this stuff. At least, again, at least offer emotional support and validation and the reflective listening. Um, A is what? What should I do? Apologize and forgive, like how, how yeah, wh wh what, how I'm gonna do it? Yeah, forgiveness, let go of resentment. And yes, you will hurt, and uh, your partner will hurt you, so you will need to apologize and make amends. Apologize and make amends. Don't forget about this one, okay? Canadian culture, I'm sorry. Anything, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sometimes you forget the, the action part. In our culture, we don't uh, verbalize, I'm sorry, but we try to, what's that? Sorry. We don't say sorry. We don't say sorry, but sometimes we do, we do stuff. Okay, like, uh, uh, but, but we need to balance. The expression is important, also the action is important. Uh, R-E-L-T. Personality. 
temperament and personality, what should we do about that? Yes, uh, understand there is two different people, two different personality, two different temperament. Mm -hmm. You know what is what is different the difference between temperament and personality? Mm -hmm. Temperament is the patient aspect of it. Yeah. But personality is accepting uh, and what was the other word? Uh, not just accepting, but the person's not personality, but appreciation. Appreciate. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know, medically, when we say temperament, this means that the part of your personality is that you are born with. You know, you tell me, no, I think a personality, do you think a personality is something we are born with or something is uh, environmental, like influence from yeah, others? It's both, I guess. Yes, it is both. We get born with something and then how we live and how we interact and what we experience. Yeah, it is a combination. I would, yeah. Yeah, 60% genetic, you are born with it, 40% environmental. So when, yeah, for personality, yeah. That's, that's my question. Yeah. And this was really the last painful question for you. Do we really change in relationships? Do so we? Considering the fact that it's 60-40. Yeah. Do we really change? Or this is something we should go into relationships knowing people would never change, but we can compromise at some spots. Yeah, we, we, we change. That's how we do change. We always change. Yeah. Okay, medically speaking, there is a genetic and there is something called the epigenetic. I don't know if you hear. Like, we can it's change it. acquired experience from the external world. No, 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 this is different. Like, ge the genes, there are certain genes that you can turn on and turn off by th changing the environment. So, let's say you have a genetic predisposition to schizophrenia. This is one of the worst, you know, uh, or the most difficult psychiatric problem, schizophrenia, like people hearing voices and uh, have delusions and stuff. Okay, there is, uh, uh, is there is a way to change, if you have the genetic part of it, is there, is there a way you change it? Yeah, there is, the diet can it change a little bit your, of your predisposition, the lifestyle, the environment, the counseling, like this, so you can, there are certain t genes that you can turn on, turn off by it's changing how healthy is the environment around you. But anyway, uh, can we change within the relationship to some degree, to some degree? Uh, can we change 180 degree? Some, uh, it's very rare, but sometimes it happens, but it doesn't happen because of a relationship. It happened because of a major life event. Like you hit by a bus. You know, you get diagnosed with cancer. You, like it's a major, major life event that can it change, you know, especially like I was giving a talk about narcissistic personality. This is one of the most difficult personality to deal with and also to fix or treat because basically they don't come even for counseling uh, because they, don't yeah, the problem in you, not in me, <laughs> man. <laughs> Uh, uh, so for these people, uh, is it easy to change these people? No, but with certain life events, okay, they, they see their life differently at certain point, especially with negative life experience. Um, wh where did we stop? I. I, what is I? Intimacy, emotional, keep it refreshed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay, <laughs> difficult question. So for, for mental health, mental health problem tend, tend to be, it's not one health, but tend to be chronic problem, chronic problem. Uh, what does that mean? It doesn't mean you, you will not treat it, you will be treating it. But some people will need antidepressant for the rest of their life. And some people will not require antidepressant for the rest of their life. Temporary, they need antidepressant but then working on themselves and the healthy lifestyle and the diet, dietary change and some supplement and the counseling and the spirituality, we can fix the problem, okay, without the need of a medication. But I would say that uh, people who have depression or anxiety, they need to be working on themselves, whatever, what, 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 what do you mean by working on themselves? 
Like it could be medication, it could be diet, it could be exercise, it could be spirituality, it could be psychotherapy, it could be reading, it could be listening to talks, but you, they need to be mindful of their mental well-being. Does it make sense? So anyway, so there is a, a, a quote in addiction, we say, once an addict, always an addict. Don't, have you heard about this? Once an addict, always an addict? It doesn't, what, what's that? <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, once an addict, always an addict, it doesn't mean that we, they will not stop. This may, they will quit. But we, we need to keep it, remind the, them that you have addictive personality or addictive tendency. You need to be mindful of your recovery plan and of your life. <coughs> like if you have addiction to alcohol, don't put yourself in a dangerous situation in a bar, for example, or attend a party when everyone is drinking and they're getting drunk. Because remember, it's easy. One drink will be 1,000 in a moment, in a, in a second. So you need, so we tell them, once an addict, always an addict. It doesn't mean that you will not quit. Yeah, you will quit, but you need to be mindful that you have this addictive brain or addictive personality. So to summarize, yeah, okay, give me a second. And so to summarize, we're gonna, that's why, you know, in my program, it is, um, we, f we fix the problem by biopsychosocial spiritual. Biological, psychological, social, and spiritual. This is the main things we work on. Like we work, so my patient, we work on exercise program, uh, diet program, counseling, social life. We address social life and the work and the school. We address also spirituality. Because to fix a mental health problem, it is a holistic approach. The problem... Uh, some people, some doctors tended to think, no, it is a, me a medication problem, but the way I see it, there is ar like a scientific argument about this. I, I still see it, it is a holistic approach to fix a mental health problem. It is ne never a medication problem. Yeah, it, it is, uh, but it is quicker and easier for doctor. Ah, you're gonna tell me about your history and trauma. I don't have time, take this, take it, come back. They fell, uh, so. Yes, it's your question. Um, it's about the personality. I suppose that personality is only from your environment. So it could be genetics and environment, more as genetics. So as a piece of art, you could say, because you, you bore it, actually. Yeah. Yes, but that, yeah, it, no, it's going to be, okay, you can change it to some degree, okay, but you need to be mindful about it all the time. So let's say, I, I, I'll make it easier. So there is some people have tendency to be angry have tendency to be angry so they need to be mindful that you know i have to have some self-control maybe a journal my feeling maybe i i reflect on the uh, negative side of anger so i don't do it again but people who don't who are not born with anger tendency they are fine they are fine they don't need to do all this work to prevent a uh, physical you know uh, abuse or something Yeah, okay, okay. Most of psychiatric problem, we don't see it, we, we can't identify one gene for it, okay? I can't do a test. There is trials trying to find the genes for all of them, but maybe one or two, like Huntington disease, if, you're, if you know about medicine, there is one or two psychiatric problems that we can find the gene, but uh, all of them, depression and anxiety, all addiction, the field where I work, there is no, I, can, I can't go under the microscope, see, take sample of blood, say, oh, guy, you will have, uh, you know, uh, addiction problem when you grow because I see it in your genes. Is, we don't have this. And also with sexuality, we don't have this. I can't identify orientation by genetic testing, okay? But how, you tell me, but how then you, you're telling me it is more genetic if you can't identify or see it uh, by testing. There is different ways, like there is something called the twin study. I don't know if you know about twins study. So if some, you know, there is identical twins and there is non-identical twins. When we see a problem, you know, identical twins you, uh, usually are very similar in everything. Even the physical problems and the personalities, very, very similar. When we see, when we see a trait, a personality trait, or a mental health disorder is common in twins. We know that a strong genetic part, especially when a study is done on twins that were adopted by different parents. 
this will be a very strong side. So I have two, uh, 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 two brothers who are identical twins. They don't have a uh, family. Uh, their parent died or whatever, or uh, 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 they were taken by foster home. And they were adopted by two different family. And they live in the two different cities, okay? And they have two different environment. And then you see the same trait is here and here. This guy is now addict. This guy, even a different environment. So the environment is, you can't blame environment now. Because you see these two identical twin coming with the same presentation. Even if I change the country and the culture and the training and the education, but still come. So this get, if, this, if we can repeat this in different studies, okay, and they will see the same observation, this gave us ideas that personality or psychiatric problem have more genetic than environmental. You see what I mean? So when we see it, it is by twins the study, these are the studies that we do, especially when the environment is not the same. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There is multiple personality. Yeah. 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 I guess I'm curious. Like, um, with the enneagram, we have like also uh, compat. Like, I think the enneagram institute they have like a personality uh, compatibility section. And so they say like, oh, you know, like a one and a four would be really good, but a five and a six would be like, you know, uh, crazy bad, you know, whatever it may be. Um, so I'm just wondering, since um, you're saying like 60% is genetic, 40% is environmental. And Selecting your partner? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I'll tell you. I just don't want the misunderstanding that when I say it is genetic, it doesn't mean that we cannot work on it. We can work on it. Okay, so let's say I know I have an anger tendency, like I am easily provoked. Okay, but I did counseling for it, and uh, I am reading about it. I'm mindful. I journal about it. I will act normal. I'll behave normally. I'll be totally fine. So what is the difference? It's fine. Yeah, you have a tendency like, like a. That's like taking after your parents, and you can really change that with practice. Right? Yeah, with practice, with counseling, with uh, therapy, because mo most of people that I'm treating, they have genetic predisposition to problem. I can't tell them, you know, closing the clinic today because you guys have genetic problem. I can't fix it. No, but uh, my my role is to how to give them skills to cope with these symptoms to the degree that nobody can see difference between the way they talk and the, the way they act and interact in the community between them and the people who don't have the problem. I would look at the communication and I will give more time. Okay. I'll give more when there is, you know, two, two extreme differences in personality and backgrounds and culture and stuff, I would give more time. I wouldn't step into like a committed marriage style relationship now and having kids. I will, one year, two years, let's do three years dating like to just to see how we're gonna, if we can make it or not. And I wouldn't also suggest two people who have psychiatric problem to get together. It's very difficult like someone who have a clinical diagnosis of depression. The problem is I see in my practice, these people tend to get to know each other faster and easier uh, because they access the same services and sometimes because they understand each other. So it, g it gives them, oh, I know, I know you, you have depression. I know the symptoms. And you have depression? Yeah, I know the symptoms. Oh, well, yeah, I, ha I have low energy, depressed mood, loss of interest. What about you? Oh, low concentration, low attention, you know, no productivity at all. Oh, wow, we're too similar. Man, let's hang out together. So it, see, it happened with addiction. It happened with it. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest that because it become very difficult because it's ups and downs, and then when it is down, if we, I am down and you are down, what are we going to do? Okay, I'm not discriminating against the people who have a mental health problem. I, I, I want them, like my job is to make them happy, try to make them happy, and stabilize, have a job, have a life. 
but I see pattern, especially like my field is addiction. Like the addict love each other very quick, very fast. Even, you know, in group, I run group therapy, like, thera like a group like this. I make them sign an agreement, you know, no dating, no hanging out together. Only in this setting, you get to know each other. No, because I know there is tendency that we love each other, we accept, we want it to be more than the group therapy, we want it to be like a relationship or longer. They have good, and I'm not saying a bad, it, what's that? Because they relate to one another. Yeah, because they relate to one another, easy to understand each other, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't recommend that. Or at least, at least if there is a, like a good match, I would, I would, make sure one of them is very, very stable, okay? Because he gonna give stability to the other person and ensure that they are on the right track. Because if I have addiction and I slip or relapse and they relapse, then what? We're gonna post overdose and I, I have seen it a lot. Any other questions? Easy question? <laughs> okay, how important is mutual physical attraction for singles? Yeah, so they ask basically how important is a physical attraction? Yeah, this is, for, is important. So as I mentioned here, you know, the physical intimacy and the emotional intimacy are important. So, but we know the attraction will uh, get lower over time. So if there is no attraction at the beginning, this is a red flag. You know, there, will, there has to be some, a, deg a degree of, of an attra physical attraction at the beginning of a relationship. I wouldn't suggest if there is zero attraction, uh, I, I wouldn't go for the relationship. So, and, and we see this sometimes the personality is very good, like you, you like them, but zero attraction to anything, but, uh, to anything else, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go with this relationship. Another question is about rejection. How to handle and move on from rejection? Um, we, I, um, I don't know what they mean by rejection, but maybe rejection from a relationship. So you're starting a relationship, so you were rejected by someone, is this is, or a general, like you're seeking approval from other, and then you feel rejection. Could be both, I'm not sure. But anyway, try as much as you can. Because in relationship, we don't complete each other. We complement each other. Okay, so, so. This co create codependency when you feel, okay, they're going to make me feel happy. They're going to solve all my problems. They're going to rescue me. Yeah, if you started a relationship with this attitude, this is going to end 100%. You need to be happy and comfortable in your own skin. This is a good sign to start a relationship. When you say, I don't need a relationship. When you are in a stage, you don't, a relationship, you don't need a relationship. This is a stage where you can have a successful relationship. Does it make sense? Because if you, no, I, I, I need to be loved, I need to be accepted, I, I need someone to make me happy, someone to talk to, like if you have this urge all the time, okay, and you can't be comfortable, because relationship, yeah, there is positive and negative. You see that how much negativity, like conflict and the problems and the losses and challenges and the kids and the stress and the, so many things, you know. So this is also, it, it come, it, it bring challenges to work on. So you need to achieve some sort of stability mentally, psychologically before uh, seeking out relationships. Uh, I think these two questions, right? Yeah. Yes. A bit, but it's still related. Yeah. So you know how if someone, you know how someone can be predisposed to getting diabetes because their parents had diabetes, but that doesn't mean that they have to get diabetes. Like they can, they can be completely fine. Is it the same with like depression, anxiety? So like maybe someone's parents have anxiety, 
so I'm predisposed to having anxiety, but just because I'm predisposed to it doesn't mean I'm going to develop it. No, it doesn't mean, no, 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 no. So when I say it is, so let's say two parents have an anxiety, it doesn't mean 100% you'll have an anxiety. There is higher chances you have an anxiety, but it doesn't, we don't know if you're going to carry the genes of the anxiety that they have. Does it, does it mean I'm predisposed to it though, or no? Uh, what, what do you mean by predisposed? There is higher I chances. Uh, you, you develop anxiety, but I don't have to. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it easier. Let, let's say if two, because we have some statistics around. Uh, so let's say if two parents have schizophrenia, we know by statistic 40% 40, 40 of their kids, by 40% they will have schizophrenia. Oh. Are you, are you, are you going to be of the 40% or the 60%? I don't know. Do you have a genetic test to say? No. But uh, you need to be mindful about this. What's that? You're saying you have to be born with it to get it genetically? It's like, let's say anxiety. If your parents have anxiety and 40% of your kids, you know, statistically, will get anxiety, uh, you will end up being one of the 40%. I'm talking about schizophrenia. I don't know the no. odds for, for it doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. 40% or whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Still there is, okay, even you have the genetic component, the environment will have a role in triggering these symptoms. Triggering yeah, triggering, starting it. But, okay, let's say if, if I know my parents have a schizophrenia, both of them, I, I, and now I, I have higher chances that I have it more than others. Schizophrenia, the 1% of population have a schizophrenia. Now I have 40% chances that I have a schizophrenia. W what should I do then? No, you just be mindful that you may, at certain point, have this problem. So if at beginning of the symptom, if you start to develop the, this symptom, you need to seek help right away. You see, so the different when we see a family history, I see it in addiction all the time. Oh, tell my dad was alcoholic. My mom was a drug user. Your parent was alcoholic. So when I see the whole family addiction, so I know these kids, even they come, because I'm still a family doctor, they come for me for general checkup. I make sure these kids doesn't, I tell them, you know, stay away from drugs, stay away from alcohol. You know, with this background, we don't want to, you know, people try to experiment. Maybe uh, some people will experiment. I don't want you to experiment any of this, of this stuff because of the higher chances, higher chances of predisposed, to be predisposed to this problem. So to go back to your question, if there is a family, there is a mental health problem. It doesn't mean 100% you'll have a problem. It just means that if you started to have symptoms, seek help right away. Don't wait until it is too late or too far in the uh, disease problem or the symptom. Any other questions? We're good to go? <laughs> okay. Guys, if you want to take a screenshot of this, or, or, I, or you know, I sent the presentation.